maybe the, the best place to start would just be with an opening statement. Um, your thoughts on coming back to Stillwater and being part of this ring of honor. Well, you know, when I was there a couple of years ago, I, I had noticed how the changes of the buildings on the campus. So um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing some more new buildings, I guess. So obviously I've been seeing uh, T-Bone Pickens Stadium, uh, Ann Greenwood, who's uh, her and her husband had the tennis facility. And she was like, if you get a chance, go over there and see that, you know, because they were supposed to host the NCAA. And so, uh, you know, I've been kind of keeping up in touch with her. We've been talking back and forth about it. So uh, I'm excited to get back. And uh, and obviously, you know, I, I got to go hang out at my place, Eskimo Joe. So, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, and, uh, you know, my, my, my uh, a couple of my kids are coming and they never experienced that. So it'll be something different for them. And uh, just kind of see where everything started with me and my wife, you know, 33 years ago, uh, the game against uh, Wyoming in 1987 uh, that we met. And uh, it's been, uh, it's been great and uh, just happy for everybody to be a part of it. Fantastic. That's great. We can't wait to have you here. And, you know, one thing that we really appreciate about you is how interested and connected you are with so many of our different sports. Uh, right. Just football. I mean, we've seen you chiming in <laughs> all wrestling and so many others. I mean, it's my school, you know, and, uh, you know, and while I was at Oklahoma State, I got the opportunity and a chance to see all that and uh, getting to know Gary Ward and Leonard Hamilton and just all the coaches that, that I grew up to uh when i was there got to know very well and so i mean when you look at our athletics i mean they're right there at the top in a lot of categories as far as golf i mean i mean i'm here yesterday to a uh cheering matthew wolf on you know i'm like come on dude let's go it's osu you know so um uh when when mike got became the head coach of the basketball team you know they were playing one of their first games in new york city and you know, I'm here in Buffalo. I was like, oh, my God, I got to try to get there. Even though I didn't get there, he sought out the, hey, if you do make it, you know, we'll, we'll set you up or whatever. So, I mean, it's um, it's been great. Um, and this past year, I went to go watch the uh, the softball team in Clearwater. They had a tournament down there. So, I mean, I, I love my athletics. I love the school. And, you know, even though I'm up here in Buffalo, I do whatever I can to uh, – to keep that brand out there. And uh, it's, uh, it's been, it was great for me and um, I'm happy to do that anytime. Thurman, we appreciate you and we love you too. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up to questions now, let members of the media in. So our first question uh, is gonna come from Robert Allen from Triple Play Sports Radio. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Thurman, how are you, man? I'm doing great. How you doing, Robert? I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I know the Sun Bowl, and I was there freezing my tail off on the sidelines <laughs> second half. Uh, nobody told me to bring a winter coat. But None of us. <laughs> I, no, but I, I remember your first bowl game, too, uh, in, the, in the Gator Bowl. And, man, I think that's when the nation really got launched on Thurman Thomas. That was a, a clutch performance against a – a big time South Carolina team. What do you remember from that Gator Bowl? Well, you know, I just remember, you know, you know, me being the freshman, uh, having Rusty Hilger be the uh, quarterback, uh, Paul Blair, uh, Jamie Harris, you know, just kind of this young freshman just out here just playing a game that he loved to play. And yes, obviously it was a, uh, you know, my first really big experience of being playing somebody like South Carolina. But, uh, you know, I was relaxed. Um, as an 18 year old, um, you know, I was, I think I was very mature at that point in time, just by being around guys like Mark Moore and Leslie O'Neill's and James Ham and those guys. And those guys kind of took me under their wing and, uh, and I became the player that I became throughout my career at Oklahoma State. And uh, I, I still remember the day where I, I can remember when coach called a uh, play for me to have the throwback to Rusty Hilger for a touchdown. I was like, Man, I haven't threw a football in I don't know how long, but he called it at the right time. So, and I ended up finishing my career, you know, five passes, four touchdowns at Oklahoma State. So, I mean, being a freshman and really having a celebration after the Gator Bowl there with all the seniors to go out on that note was really special. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to ask too that uh, this summer there was a, uh, a story, and I mean, we had all kinds of things going on this summer that, that, 
certainly, you know, many needed to be said. But I wanted to ask, what, what's your relationship with Coach Gundy now? Because I have seen you guys together a couple of times. I've seen him with Hart and uh, talked to Hart this summer. What, right. what are you looking forward to seeing Coach Gundy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just, I just watched a clip where he always talks about, and, and he always talks about the way that I practice. And, yeah. you know, that to me, you know, that right there said a lot because I, you know, how I practice was how I play. And, and for him to say that, yeah, that means a lot. And uh, look, my relationship with Mike Gundy is, is probably strong. Uh, I wish it could be stronger. I know, hey, he's a head coach at Oklahoma State University, a big time school, and he has this thing and his family to worry about. So, you know, like I say, I haven't, you know, really, I, I've ran into Mike a couple of times throughout this time since he's been the head coach, but, you know, that relationship is going to continue to be strong. Um, like I said, I don't know him as well as probably I should know him, and, and that's something that, you know, I'm looking forward to. I, I, I would love to sit, sit down and have a conversation with Mike Gundy, like I have a conversation with Melvin Gillum, like I have a conversation with Curtis Looper, Hartley Dice. I mean, those guys. I have conversations with those guys, so I know them a little better. And with Gundy doing his thing at Oklahoma State, um, you know, it's that's just not an opportunity for me to sit down all the time and talk to him. I love Mike Gundy. I'm not going to lie. I love Mike Gundy. I love that he handed the ball off to me 20, 25, 30 times a game. I love that, you know. So uh, he was a big part of, of my career, big part of Barry's career, big part of Hart Lee's career. Um, I just wish that the bond can be a little bit stronger because I get tired of seeing whatever the school down the street does all the time with their yeah. former players, you know what I'm saying? So I would love to have that strong relationship uh, with Mike Gundy, and so would a lot of other players. Yeah, and, and, and I think he would like to see that, uh, that too, that, that, that needs to be part of the organization, something reaching out to former players. Hey, Thurman, thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Robert. Our next question is gonna come from Frank Bonner from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Thurman, I appreciate you taking the time for us. Um, you talked about, you know, how much you support OSU athletics and everything. I'm sure you, you've seen a lot of Chuba Hubbard. Um, <laughs> in, your, in your opinion, what, what makes him so special and dangerous to opposing defenses? I think what makes him so dangerous is that, you know, I mean, his speed. I mean, <laughs> you know, he, his speed is – unmatched when you're talking about running backs, when you start talking about wide receivers and the speed that he has. I mean, it's just a little inch or two that he needs, a little small gap in order for him to take it 50 yards or take it 90 yards. And you know if he's going to take it the long way, 80 yards, and once he gets his stride, there's nobody on the football field that's going to catch him. There's nobody on the football field that's going to catch him. So, and he's very smooth. You know, it, it's not a lot of wiggle waggle. You know, it's just put the foot down in the ground and make a cut and go. And so he's a big guy, lanky guy, strong though. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him up, up close and up in person. So, uh, uh, you know what, this is what we need every two, three, four years, a running back that can dominate a football game. I mean, that's, you know, like with a lot of these other teams, they always talk about, yeah, we get a quarterback every year. You talk about LSU being a DBU, defensive back university, Oklahoma State can very easily be tailback you. Uh, and I know when you talk about that, you talk about, you know, Barry, you talk about myself, you talk about Hubbard now. There was, you know, before us, there was Ernest Anderson. I mean, a guy that led the nation in rushing. So we've had a number of great running backs uh, that come through there. And I just think that that just needs to continue. Looking at this all the team in general, what, what do you think the ceiling is for, for OSU this year? The ceiling is, you know what, I'm glad they got that game out of the system last week against Tulsa because that scared me <laughs> to death. And to be ranked that high, I know it's, you know, it's Tulsa, but you know what, that's a game that we need to really, should have really went out and, and really kind of played better football. And we didn't, but we got the W. And now we have an opportunity to come up this weekend Hey, look, hey, 
I'm going to be mad as hell if, if they lose this game on the weekend that I'm there. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I just think that this team is going to have to continue to grow. I, I know they're still kind of, you know, working over some issues that happened over the summer. And I think we all know what we're talking about. So I think everybody still just needs to keep coming together and, and continue to build on, which I think will be a great football team that should be, uh, right at the end, hopefully down for the Big 12 championship. I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question is from Jenny Carlson from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jenny. Hey, Thurman. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, you mentioned Ernest Anderson before, and I know he was a guy on your visit that was uh, impactful. You've said that before, that being around him and, and Jimmy Johnson at the time, but um, I'm wondering when you got to OSU, um, just the, the role that having guys like Ernest before you in that running back position, what impact that had on you as a Cowboy? Well, the first impact that, um, that it had on me was that, you know, Ernest said, and, you know, I'm going to let you wear 34. I was like, oh boy, yes, I'm all in now, you know. So that really had a bigger, uh, a big impact on me, knowing that he had just led the nation in rushing, uh, and I was going to continue to wear 34 uh, because of him, and he wanted me to. But uh, you know, it's one of those things where you're you're a young 18 year old, and you think that you know everything, and you really don't. And to have an older guy like that, him and another guy was Sean Jones, who was a running back when I was at my freshman year, he was a senior. So when you have that type of leadership and you have those type of guys who want to see you well, do well when you get that opportunity, you know, that's what it's all about, you know, getting to know those guys and, and how they feel about you. So, look, I was an 18-year-old. I had a lot of uh, friends that helped me once I got to Oklahoma State. And uh, Ernest was definitely one of those guys. For them to have been that uh, kind of uh, example for you, and now you're, as the first guy in the ring of honor, you know, forever going to be one of those guys for future Cowboys. What is – what does that mean to you to now be, you know, set up as an example for the program? Well, you know what? It, 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 it's great to have and be the first one to go up in the ring of honor. But you know what? I still have to do my job. I, I, I still have to uh, get stronger ties with the, or with the uh, university, which I'm going to do from this point on. There's been, you know, a gap between some of the alumni and some of the people you know, at the athletics uh, department. So, uh, and I, and I want to bridge that gap. I want to make that uh, gap come together. And uh, I will, so I'm the first one going up and whoever's going to be second, I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to congratulate them. And I'm going to keep doing that every single year, you know, and even for the players that, that don't go up and be on the ring of honor, you know, those are the guys that really, you know, uh, make our job easier. You know, you can always have the talented guys, but when you have guys like, uh, Big Woo and J.R. Dillard and some of those guys who don't really get a lot of the recognition. Those are the guys there that I want to see come back to, you know, because, um, you know, they're they're a part of what's going on and what's getting there to start Saturday from here on. Hey, uh, sorry to uh, dominate questions here, but the fact that you're now thinking about, you know, sort of your impact in the future to, like you say, be a bridge. I mean, that's, it sounds like you, you've you sort of come to that realization. What was it that ultimately made you think, I want to, I want to enable this. I want to now have another role in Oklahoma State Athletics. Well, I, I think with the growth of the university, the growth of the sports department, um, I mean, you can just, you can go back. I mean, I think Robin Ventura is there, right? He's back in baseball, you know. So, I mean, those, uh, you know, yeah, I, I want to be a part of it. I, I think it's really special for, uh, you know, for a guy like me who who can be outspoken at some times. But, you know, I think this is for the good for the university, period. Uh, not just the athletic department. I think for the university uh, period. And really, you know, if it touches uh, people, you know, in Tulsa or in Oklahoma City, you know, you know this is an opportunity for me to – uh, really show, kind of really show who I am. And, and I want to be that part for, for Oklahoma State. Cool. 
Thanks, Thurman. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Our next question from Bill Haston from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Bill. Thurman, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can hear you, Bill. Hey, uh, good to see you. Uh, I, I wanted to ask an NFL question. If, if uh, Who in the league today, I mean, I think back 30 years, uh, and I think of you, and I think of Marshall Falk as right. guy who changed the position. Uh, when you watch football today, do you think do you do you, does it kind of register with you that you that you really were on the cutting edge of changing the tailback position uh, at the pro football level? Well, you know what I um, yeah I, I would say I can see that in a lot of uh, of the running backs today. Uh, you know, unfortunately, um, I just met him a couple of years ago. Saquon Barkley went down. I think he's in that era of was getting ready to. Um, dominate like running the football and catching the football out of the backfield. Um, I, I think more and more guys are coming up to be that sort of all-purpose all back. Uh, the guy right now who I, if you saw last night, was Alvin Kamara for the New Orleans Saints. Can run the football, can catch the ball down the field just as smooth as silk. And uh, so – yeah, I, I do see that changing, but I also see it changing because of the quarterback position too. Uh, you know, you 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 want your main guys out there, and you're going to have a in this league now. You're going to have quarterbacks throwing the football, whether it's uh, to the wide receivers or to the running back, because those are some of the matchups now that you see. If you got a guy like Alvin Kamara who can who can beat a defensive back or can beat a linebacker when coming out of the backfield running a pass route. So, uh, yeah, I. I, I <laughs> Look, I, I I love being in that com conversation, but, you know, guys like Marshall Falk, uh, Marcus Allen, those guys, uh, Marcus Allen before me, uh, you know, those guys came and did an excellent job too. But to say that I kind of fit in that conversation is just fine with me, that being that all-around back. You'd be a $90 million back today, Thurman. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know if that, if that haunts you or if you just <laughs> – don't pay attention to it because every guy can look at the money today. You know what I'm saying? And, and think, damn it. I wish, you know, I wish I could get in on some of that money now, but I, I, I hear from my wife and my three daughters and my son all the time. Trust me. <laughs> trust me. I do it. Yeah. I hear it all the time. Uh, this is my last question. Before Thurman Thomas came to Oklahoma state, there had never been a 10 win season in the history of the program. You had three of them. Uh, there's been like nine, I think now in the history of the program, uh, you, you and Gundy kind of launched all that. Uh, but, but how do you feel about that being part of your legacy too, that you were part of elevating the program, uh, to a different place? Well, you know what? I, I, I feel very honored that I'm one of the guys that elevated, um, the program. Uh, I mean, that's what you want to do. I mean, any football player that's coming out of high school, go to a college and, you know, try to elevate that program. I just happened to be on that first team that got that 10 wins and, and kind of carried it for the next three, three years. And then now obviously Gundy is taking over back in 2011 and carried and, and we got more. That's the way it's supposed to be. So, uh, you know, I take my hat off to Pat Jones for really that first year, really being a first year head coach and really, gathering those players together and saying that, hey, we got a good football team here. We got a good football team. And that was after, you know, Jimmy Johnson had left. I mean, we didn't know where we were going, you know, with our new head coach now. And uh, so, yeah, for being a part of that and kind of putting guys into the pros more often with our program getting stronger and stronger. And for me to be right there back in 1984, being a part of that when it started means a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Thurman. You're welcome, Bill. Our next question comes from Jason Elmquist from the Stillwater News Press. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Thurman. Thanks for taking your time this morning. No, thank you, Jason. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, kind of going back to your, your comment of, of kind of a disconnect between the program and former players, OSU's the, been the only program in the Big 12 without a, a public recognition of former players, whether Ring of Honor and statues. How do you think this creation of Ring of Honor can help bridge that gap now uh, with the former players, whether they're, they're recognized or just knowing that their teammates will now be recognized? Well, I think it, it does a lot. I mean, I've talked to – obviously, there's 
not going to be as many fans and they're not going to allow many players to come back. Uh, you know what? I, I get, I would have guaranteed you that most of the guys that I play with and that were in my class, they were coming to this. And, and that's how you bring people together because I told them, you know, once I got this, I, I sent a letter or email out to all the guys that I know. And for me, you know, I could have sat back and not invited anybody or whatever, but this is an opportunity, man, to bring uh, some of the younger guys, uh, some of the older guys to meet some of the younger guys. You know, I, I, the 90s, um, you know, through the 80s, through the 90s, I would love for all those guys. I would love for Des Bryant to come back. I would love for Justin Blackman to come back because those guys, you know, I never really got an opportunity or a chance to really meet them or know them. And it's so many of like. I see weeding all the time, you know, <laughs> but I, I want to see a lot of more of those players. And uh, so I think when they continue to do this, you will see more and more players uh, reach out because like I said, I'm reaching out to as many players as I possibly can. Obviously with COVID or whatever, we won't have, we won't be allowed to have all those guys there, but this is a great thing. This is a great start and uh, I'm going to continue to push forward for Oklahoma State Athletics. Obviously we saw a video of how you were, uh, informed of this honor, what would what did it mean for you to to get uh, the legendary John Smith, someone who was at OSU at the same time as you, to to break that news to you? Oh man, you know, I told John on that call. You know, you know, he was the reason why I'm into wrestling so much right now, because I had, I mean, living in Texas, it was just football, football, football. That was it. I didn't know anything about wrestling unless you watch the WWE on TV or whatever, you know, with Ernie Ladd and all those guys. That's the only wrestling that I knew about. So to get there and to see all these people going in the Gallagher Ivor Arena, and I'm like, where are y'all going? What are y'all doing? I'm like, they're like, we're going to see John Smith. You know, I'm like, he's a wrestler. I'm like, he's really good. I'm like, okay, well, all right. So I get in there in the arena, and, you know, within 30 to 40 seconds, the match is over. You know, John had put up so many points on the guy that he was wrestling again, they just called it, right? So I'm like, okay, it's pretty fun. So I started going to more and more matches, and uh, he, he's uh, he, he's a legend around there. Um, you know, I've actually been to a couple of uh, NCAA uh, championship wrestling uh, events, the one in St. Louis uh, not too long ago. So, um, you know, to have him, a legend like that, man, introduce me to this honor was uh, really special. And uh, we, we keep in touch a lot of the times. And, uh, man, it was – to have a legend like that, I don't know what what other legend could have been either bigger than John Smith. Thanks for your time, Thurman. Yeah. Our next call – or, excuse me, our next question is going to come from Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoma. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Thurman, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Hey, I want to go back to uh, kind of before you got to OSU. Do you remember your recruitment um, and kind of how that broke down, how you chose the Cowboys? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, coming from Texas, you know, you're either going to University of Texas or you're going to Texas A&M University. That was it, you know. And, and so uh, what happened was that my first visit, you know, I was an Earl Camel fan. It was my hero growing up. So I'm, I'm – I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm going to University of Texas no matter what, right? So um, I get to Texas, and uh, Fred Akers is the head coach. And uh, so we walk, I walk into his office, we get to talking, and uh, he said, you know, we're really set at the running back position. We want you to play defensive back. I was like, oh, okay, defensive back. Well, I'm 5'9". It's not going to. That's not going to work for me. I, I appreciate Jerry Gray, who was in college, All-American at the time, showing me around, but I'm not playing defensive back. So I go to Texas A&M, and um, Jack and Cheryl, kind of the same thing, never really talked about the running back position, anything like that. And, um, and so I get to Oklahoma State, and Jimmy Johnson pulls me aside and says, hey, look, I heard Texas wants you to play defensive back and maybe – Texas A&M. I said, yeah, coach, I'm, I want to play running back. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, if you come here, you're going to be number six on the depth chart and you can have 34, but that's where we're going to go. I would say, I was like, I'm sold. I'm sold. I, I mean, I don't want to go to a place where they're just going to hand me a job. He said I was six and I was going to be a six tailback. So that meant I had five other guys in front of me and I had to catch those guys. 
And so when I found out that, you know, I said that before I left, I'm committing, I'm coming to Oklahoma State. I, I have two more visits um, to uh, Baylor and TCU. And I'll make my announcement right after those two visits. I want to don't want to make the announcement right now. And I still got two visits. So that's how that happened, man. And it was, uh, it was very nice until my mom asked Jimmy, are you going to be here four years with my son? And Jimmy promised that he was going to be there four years oh, with man. me. And two weeks later, he left and went to the University of Miami. And my mom still today cannot stand Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then how did, I mean, would she, did she try to get you to go somewhere else? I mean, you know, when Jimmy leaves, does that change things for you at all? It didn't change it at all. No. Didn't change it at all. I had made a commitment to Oklahoma State. Um, you know, they made a commitment to me and tell me where I was going to be. And once Pat Jones became the head coach, my first practice, I'm, I'm right there. I'm number six. So I'm number six and all the thing. Yeah, I didn't ask for anything. And uh, that didn't change my mind. I committed to Oklahoma State at that time. And I wasn't going to change my mind. And uh, it was the best decision that I ever made. Because I think if I transfer, I, I probably have to sit out a year anyway. So, um, you know. I was on special teams the first four or five games, making plays on special teams. And Coach Jones, back in Manhattan, we were playing Kansas State and say, all right, it's your time. And I got my opportunity and uh, just, took it, just took it from there. You kind of mentioned like, Texas, or Texas A&M or bust for a Texas kid. How rare was it for a Texas kid to end up in Stillwater? How rare was it what? For a Texas kid to end up in Stillwater. Um, well, when you look at the at, at the year when I got there, it, it, it's tough for a kid from Texas to leave and go to another state. And but once I got there, you know, my roommates, all my my roommates were from Texas. You know, Curtis Looper, Ronnie Williams. Uh, you know, those guys were from Texas. And I was like, and you look at the roster, and we're like, okay, we got Oklahoma, we got Arkansas, and we got Texas. I'm like, well, we fit right in. And uh, I think it's, I think it's obviously great when you think about, you know, the guys that are on the Texas roster, when you talk about uh, Oklahoma State and University of uh, Oklahoma, that they're filled with guys from Texas. And uh, so it's, uh, it was great for me to be there with some uh, fellow Texans. Awesome. Thanks, Thurman, and congrats on everything. Thank you. Well, thank goodness that you did come to Oklahoma State. <laughs> they kept you at running back, and right. everyone got to watch you make history, both in the in college ranks and in the NFL. So, yeah. uh, so Thurman, our next question is going to come from Morgan Beard from KTUL in Tulsa. Go ahead, Morgan. Hey, Mr. Thomas, thanks for doing this. This is pretty awesome so far. Uh, I got a question. It it seems kind of crazy that it's been so long that they, they waited to get this ring of honor going, but the fact that you're the first one's amazing in its own right. But who do you think is going to come after you, or who would you like to see join you in that ring of honor, uh, I guess, in the coming years? Well, I mean, you know, obviously my my second choice would be Barry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, if you think about that, but you know what? There's been a lot of great athletes that played three or four years at Oklahoma State. You know, I mean, I – that that's, won't be my decision. Uh, it'll be up to whoever made the decision to put me in first. But uh, hopefully, you know, coming up, you know, the obvious choice would be Barry. But I don't want to just not talk about the other guys that might have an opportunity to go up there too. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I've been pulling for Hartley Dykes to get into the College Football Hall of Fame for the past couple of years. I mean, all-time leading great. Got all the – pretty much had all the OSU records until they really started throwing the ball in the Big 12. Um, still hold all the records in the Big 8. Um, and, and was kind of one of those guys who were kind of kind of overlooked a little bit. And I know, you know, people are always going to bring up, you know, the, the probation and all that stuff. But when that guy was on the football field, he was one of the best wide receivers to ever play at that time. You talk about 6'4", 225 pounds, that could run like a four six. I mean, that's that was unheard of back then. So, um, you know, there's so many. Des Bryant, obviously, I, and there's so many other more. 
uh, Russell Okun. I mean, it, the list goes on and on when you really talk about the great guys that come out of Oklahoma State. Uh, so uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. But, you know, um, one of the guys who I look and I'm, I'm really waiting for an opportunity to get a chance to meet um, is the uh, first African-American ever played football at uh, Oklahoma State University, uh, Chester Pittman. Um, you know, to be able to really look at and what happened over the summer, you know, I got a chance to see who was the first baseball, first black baseball player, first black football player, first black basketball player to ever play at Oklahoma State. All that, you know, really came to me and uh, really made me sit down and think about, you know what, these are the guys who we really should be out here pulling for. Now, I don't know if they're going to be put on the ring of honor or whatever, but I think at some point in time we need to address, you know, those three guys. And I can't, I'm just, I can't remember the wrestler's name that was the first black to ever wrestle, but, uh, and forgive me for that, but uh, uh, I don't know who it would be, but I'm sure it'll be just as exciting as it is for me. Hey, thank you. Very much. Yep, and Jimmy Jackson is who you're thinking of in wrestling, and he was actually an NCAA champion as well. Right, and there it goes, Jimmy Jackson, JJ. Yep. Oh man, thanks, that Gavin. It's my pleasure. He was one of our greats. We've been yep. we've been stockpiling a lot of this information around here lately. Good, great, absolutely. I appreciate that. Sure thing. So our next question is going to come from Garen Emig from the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Garen. Thurman, congratulations, man. That's big time. Thank you. Appreciate it, Gary. This weekend. Um, hey, when you and, and Melvin and I had our conversation in early July, I think we all had hoped that one of the things immediately that, that would happen as a result would be uh, a phone call or, or an email or outreach from, from Mike, from, from Mike Gundy. Did, did he do that? Did he make that effort in the aftermath? He made an effort to uh, reach out to Melvin. And uh, I don't know, I've talked, I haven't talked to Melvin in a couple of weeks. I don't know if they've had that conversation. I mean, obviously with the season kicking off, it's going to be hard to even try to have that conversation unless, you know, on, on somebody, on, on one of those guys' day off. I know Melvin is up in Stillwater every other week. So, uh, you know, I have, like, I have not talked to Mike. I, I hope to see Mike uh, sure. this weekend. Uh, you know, I wasn't worried about kind of like, trying to make this into, you know, have I talked to him or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll get that opportunity w without a doubt. Um, you know, I'm still going to be pushing forward on, on, on the alumni situation and, right. and Oklahoma State situation. So, I, hey, look, this here is a start. This here is a start, me coming back, hoping to have a conversation with Gundy, Mike Holder, everybody that's, that's been involved with this, you know, because I am – Hey, you know, you, you still want to see some change. You know, you still want to see what are they doing as a university to, to, to close all this. So uh, I, hopefully I, I will, I will uh, get to see Mike and talk to him for a little bit. I know it won't be a long time, but you know what? He'll know where I'm coming from, and I'll know where he's coming from a little bit better. Yeah. Real, real quick follow-up. I, I don't know that, that I know how close you, you remain if you, if you are close with Barry. To this day, I don't. I don't remember getting a, getting a chance to ask you that question. How, what's your relationship with Mr. Sanders like? Oh, it's great. I mean, <laughs> I may I may text him today, and it may I might get a text back three or four weeks from now, <laughs> but he will return that text. <laughs> um, you know what? It's uh, the relationship. My 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 relationship and Barry's relationship has been awesome yeah. throughout the years. I mean, ever since you know. The first day that he stepped foot on in, on the campus at OSU back in 1986, you know, our relationship has always been strong. And then think of a guy, he got drafted by Detroit, which is not that far from Buffalo. So we've always been able to, you know, stay close. And uh, we've been able to stay close as friends uh, throughout all these years. Uh, I ran into his son, Barry Jr., not too uh, last year, you know, he works for EA Sports now. And so, you know, I had an opportunity to work with them. So uh, that relationship has always been as strong. And and like I tell everybody, I, I taught him everything that he knows. <laughs> <laughs> He'd say the same, I'm sure. Listen, have, yeah. <laughs> fun. have fun this week. I appreciate it. All right, it. thank you, Garrett.
So, Thurman, our final question is going to come from Chris Becker from the Ocali, which is the student paper here on campus. Go ahead. Okay. Thurman, first off, congratulations. Thank you. Oh, what, what was going through your head when you first got that phone call from John Smith? Um, wow, you know what? It was um, – <laughs> I didn't. I didn't actually know what it was. You know, I, you know, I, I never really thought about not. You know, Oklahoma State not having a ring of honor. I know they, you know, have like a couple of jerseys retired. I didn't know what it was. I was like, man, they're gonna be. Is it gonna be a statue or what is it gonna be? I know they've already talked about maybe having a statue or whatever, but not of me or T. Boone or Barry or something out front. But I'm like, what is this? What are they gonna do? And for them to have John Smith do it. And to tell me what was going on, like I said, I didn't have a clue of what they were calling about. I knew something was going to be done on this day against West Virginia. I just had no idea what it was. Um, um, maybe re-retiring my jersey. I had no idea. But when they told me that it was, I was going to be the first one to go up on the Ring of Honor, you know, it, it, it really hit me. And it really hit me hard that, okay, I'm going to be first, but what am I going to do with this? I'm going to get there and you know what, I'm going to start bringing the university together. I'm going to start just doing a lot more things for Oklahoma state uh, to be the first. And uh, hopefully the guys that will follow behind me will continue to do the same thing that I'm doing. Uh, you know, how meaningful was it that you know, they're playing West Virginia who you played in your last game. They're wearing the same jerseys that you wore. <laughs> you know, what, what's that, what's that like? Well, I wanted to end with a W. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. But uh, to have them wear that jersey um, is actually – that jersey is, like, in my basement, you know. And I went down the other day to look at him like, wow, they're going to be wearing the exact same jersey that I played my last football game in against West Virginia. You know, like, that jersey right there. And I'm like – Wow, that's – so for me, and it was really great, but I think for all the guys that are going to be wearing this jersey Saturday to make – to remember, you know, what kind of what this game was all about. You know, I wore that jersey, and we won uh, at the Sun Bowl against West Virginia. So uh, it's going to be special, man, to see it, and uh, my family and I are really looking forward to it. Thank you, Tom. Thurman. I appreciate it. And once again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Chris. So, Thurman, I'm going to put you in an alternate reality situation here, okay? So, the year is 1987, and you're the offensive coordinator. It's fourth and goal from the two. You've got Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders in the backfield. you got Hartley Dykes outside. What player are you calling, and who's getting the ball? Uh, well, seeing that years, my senior year, that Barry and I ran the wishbone at um, against Oklahoma, and I think his first carry was for like minus three yards, and my first carry was for like minus four yards. So, um, I think I'm gonna throw it up to Hartley. All depends on what what. <laughs> You got so many choices. You got so many great athletes that you want to give the ball to. I mean, obviously, I'm not a blocker, so I'm probably not going to block as well as a fullback would for Barry and vice versa. So, you know what? Look out there, and hopefully Hartley Dykes has a 5'9 defensive back on him, and he's 6'4". I think I'm going to go with that one. We see Hartley time to time and actually most recently we saw him at the Houston Bowl uh, when we were out there excuse me the Texas Bowl in Houston right. to cap last season he looks like he could still go today yeah he looks like it but he can't he can't <laughs> his body has broken down a lot you know and I mean he had a lot of injuries when he got drafted you know by the New England Patriots and uh uh yeah he tells me all the time say no nah, I he even stopped really playing golf you know his body is kind of breaking down a lot so uh but uh, he's still the intimidating force that I've always seen him as. Sure thing. Well, we cannot thank you enough for joining us today and you know, speaking here from Oklahoma State. Um, we're proud of you. Um, this, is, this is an honor that's been overdue and it's, we're so happy to see this happen. Um, kind of while we have the group here, um, do you have any final thoughts or just closing statements, things that you want to say uh, here to the group? Uh, well, you know, thank you for everybody for being on the phone call. I really appreciate it. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to uh, coming and, you know, being on the former campus, you know, that I was on some 30 something years ago, uh, seeing all the new buildings and really meeting all the new people. I know there's a lot of new alumni and fans around there and uh, it's just going to be great to be back and, and be a part of something in, in which we probably never should have been separated from. Uh, this is an opportunity to pull everybody together uh, and have a great weekend. But first and foremost, you know, I, I want all the guys out on the football field to do well. I want them to win the football game. And uh, uh, it's just everybody just stay safe and uh, have a great time. Well, thank you so much. This means the world to us. We appreciate you and congratulations. Get here safe. We can't wait in person. All right. Thank you, guys. Everybody have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.